Megan, Jader, Logan, Daytona, and Jack. And the title of our performance is Route 66, Road of Possibilities. Well, go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City. It looks so, so pretty. Get your kicks. On Route 66, with the development of the more affordable automobile, the United States encountered the need for a paved transcontinental highway. Highway of hope. In 1916, inspired by Cyrus Avery and John Woodruff's ideas, the Federal Aid Road Act was passed by Congress to meet the demands of a rapidly changing America. $75 million was allocated to states to begin construction on paved roads. Main Street of America. On November 11, 1926, Route 66 was commissioned in the hopes of connecting transportation roadways in the United States. Road of Possibilities. In its infancy, it represented a newly opened tour route for people to explore becoming an escape route during the Great Depression and an open road for convoys during World War II. Road of Flight. Route 66, the, the mother, mother road, road of highway systems, led to the development of a mass exchange of goods, money, and cultural heritage throughout the United States. Bye, Dom. What is the problem now? It better not be more mud. We already lost an hour getting out of the last mess. Don't worry. It's not mud. It's a rock. A really big rock. <laughs> you know, what about that horse instead of this car like I told you? Don't stop. We need to get these crops to the railroad before dark. Oh, so now we're in a hurry when it is said to take 60 to 90 days to cross the continent by automobile. The rapid increase of automobile use in the early 20th century is leading to a demand for smoother and better roads. We need to unite for better roads. Time out. Boring scene alert. <laughs> what was about to happen here was the delivering of paragraphs of really important, but mind-numbing historical facts. <laughs> we don't want to lose our audience. How about we give you the clip notes? <laughs> now this here is our good roads convention, which took place in the early 1900s. Automobile clubs, asphalt producers, and petroleum businesses were encountering the need for better roads. These conventions were the backbone of a movement to rid America of inferior roads and pave a network of highways across the United States. The farmers weren't too happy about an interstate system. They just wanted better country roads to get across the railroads faster. The railroads were for the system because they thought they'd improve the freight business. What were they thinking? <laughs> I am John Butcher, who's working with Cyrus Avery to explain to everyone how the world was changing from being dependent on horsepower to one dependent on petroleum. Cy was pointing out to the farmers that it would lessen our, their isolation and allow goods to be exchanged faster. And I represent the asphalt producers during the Industrial Age, cemented concrete was developed, and maximum density asphalt further makes the possibility of good roads. All right, now let's get on to the next scene. <laughs> John, as secretary of the Mid-Continent Highway Association, I have tried to focus the public's attention on the cause of good roads. We have worked with rural communities to establish good roads, but our organization saw the need for a national, well-organized plan of development. Sorry, the 1916 Federal Road Act, known as the Chapel Ford Bill, has passed through the House and the Senate. President Wilson, this bill has allocated $75 million to be spent over the next five years for the cause of good roads. This bill will make public highways thoroughfares for commerce. This legislation will make the federal government the primary financer of an interstate highway system. I was chosen to the Office of State Highway Commissioner. Now, on this day in February 1926, I have been appointed consulting highway specialist by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. My subcommittee is responsible for hanging numbers on these interstate highway systems. I will designate this road as Route 66, a Chicago to Los Angeles route. There is so much dust, this ability is one fifth of a mile. I have dust in places, I didn't know it could get dusty. <laughs> there are worse things to worry about than your dusty places. <laughs> April 1935, worst dust bowl on record. Our rich wheat fields have turned into a desert wasteland and we have had to leave our farmland. Exploring transcontinental Route 66 has become our escape route to a fresh start with new work. Yeah, the mother road. Our pockets may be empty, but our hearts are full of hope. Hey folks, what can I do for you? We just drove in on three tires and a rim. Could we park here? I've been seeing a lot of the Okies. 1936 and this Great Depression has made Route 66 the most traveled long distance highway in the state. This is a modern day Santa Fe Trail. Thousands of Americans migrating west. We're headed to California to look for work. Is that your mom Ford over there? You guys looking for work? You work from sunup to sundown, now give me room in 
and forth. You are the Route 66, the road of possibilities. With the Great Depression, I started many types of American businesses. But luckily, ours forced on Route 66 because people explored the open road looking for work. True enough, and the U.S. economy sprang to life when the nation entered World War II last December 1941. Great for the country. But this booming war economy is suppressing tourism on Route 66. Most people are at war or working, like you should be doing. It's not <laughs> my fault that the government is rationing gasoline and tires. Hey, folks. Have any idea why I get someone to take a look at my truck while I get something to eat? These roads are deteriorating from all the defense materials that we're hauling. Try the gas station next door. All weather, long distance roads are important to the war effort. The roads are full of trucks like mine carrying military supplies. Which means fewer motorists pay the gasoline tax needed to maintain our highways. Be nice. The tourists wander, so your wallets. <laughs> Roadside <laughs> entrepreneurs soon discovered they could coax travelers to part with their money. Anyone who thought they had a gimmick could turn it into cash. Soon, a new racket called the tourist trap marked the American roadscape. With all the cars and hoopla, competition heated up quickly in all facets of roadside services. Hotels, motels, diners, drive-ins, filling stations, and mom and pop businesses battled it out to earn their slice of the 3.5 billion a year American pie. Billboards sprang up to coax travelers off Route 66 and into their lives. Roadside advertising became a standard by the 1960s. Inside it must be right, welcome to Steak and Shake, established on Route 66 in 1934. Can't get a billboard just for train. You bet. The main street of America has become a foremost route of tourist travel. Motorists pull in every day to give an order and exchange their stories. Just the other day, this couple came in and went on and on about how they were about to take the most rewarding vacation room with opportunities to encounter cultural heritage. So I says to them, cultural heritage? You want cultural heritage? You just take Route 66 to Santa Maria, New Mexico. And they says, why forever for? And so I says to take in the Native American craft and custom without having to become famous.